In this video, I'm going to show you how I built these two custom vanities for a fraction of the price you're quoted from a cabinet supplier and way nicer quality than you're going to find in a big box store. Let's get started. I started by building the carcasses out of three quarter inch plywood. I like to lay the plywood down on my table on top of a sheet of rigid insulation. This way I don't have to worry about cutting through into my table and the cutoffs are completely supported. I simply make a mark on each side, line up my homemade guide, and make the cut. I'll mention that I'm building these vanities for my parents' new home that my dad and I have been building this summer. Make sure you're subscribed because I have more videos coming as we finish out the house. Also, I've shown pretty much the whole house building process over on Instagram if you'd like to check it out. There's a wide range of different vanity heights, but I'm cutting my side pieces at 33 and a half inches tall so when I add the two inch thick top, they're a final height of 35 and a half inches. I'm making one vanity 36 inches wide and the other 48. The carcass is 20 and a half inches deep and then after I add the three quarter inch face frame, there will be about a three quarter inch overhang all the way around. This would all just depend on the size of countertop you want and personal preference. After I broke the plywood down into more manageable pieces, I finished cutting them to final size over at the table saw. These skinny strips that I'm ripping are all the stretchers that will connect everything, as well as the toe kicks. After the stretchers were cut to length at the miter saw, I had the two carcasses ready to assemble in no time at all. To connect everything, I drilled pocket holes on both ends of all the stretchers, on the bottom of the center drawer dividers, as well as both ends of the bottom shelf piece. You'll be able to see this better when I start assembling everything. Here I'm laying out and cutting notches in the middle drawer divider sections where the stretchers will cross. The camera was really shaky here, but I also had to cut out a section where the bowl of the sink hangs down. And lastly was a quick sand. I won't bore you with all the sanding throughout the video, but just know that I sanded everything to 120 grit since this is being painted. To assemble, I first scribed a line on the inside bottom of the side pieces at four and a quarter inches. Then I clamped the bottom shelf in place above the line and attached it with glue and pocket holes. Here I'm making a line at 2 inches from the front and attaching the toe kick above this line. This isn't how a normal toe kick is made in a cabinet, but I really like how this detail looks once it's finished. You can see I also use pocket holes going up into the bottom piece as well. I didn't have this originally planned, but here I'm also adding a piece flush with the back to completely support that bottom shelf. Next I could attach the center divider. Our water lines and drain come out of the wall, so I simply made the drawer area as big as I could without interfering with the pipes. Cutting a dado groove in the bottom shelf and screwing up from the bottom is a good way to attach this, but pocket holes are a good solution too, and I just made sure I drilled them on the drawer side where they will be covered with the slides and never seen. Then I used the pocket holes in the stretchers to connect the sides, and pre-drilled and screwed the center divider in where I cut those notches. The back stretcher is vertical to give a place to screw it to the wall, and the front stretcher is horizontal. It's just really important to triple check that this center divider is straight so everything ends up nice and square at the end. With the carcasses done, I could move on to milling up the rough poplar for the face frames and all the doors and drawers. If you don't have all these tools, you can certainly just buy your lumber pre-milled from any big box store. That goes for anything you see me doing, really. There's always another way to do something and you don't necessarily need all these tools. But if you are interested in anything you see me using throughout the video, I'll be sure to provide links for everything down in the description below. My milling process starts at the joiner, getting one face flat and then flipping that face up on the fence and squaring up an edge. 
Then I head to the planer with the flat face down to bring the opposite face coplanar and mill it all down to a thickness of 3 quarter inch. Next I can put the jointed edge along the table saw fence and rip the pieces to final width. I went with 1.5 inches for the face frame and 2 and a quarter inches wide for the door and drawer, rails and styles. I always mill up my pieces a little long and cut the final length at the miter saw. In case there's any snipe left from the planer, I can simply cut it off. And once again, back to the Craig jig to cut pocket holes and all the rails. If you're watching this when it's first released, this M12 fuel drill and impact set is on sale right now for the holidays and I really can't recommend it enough. It's super lightweight and compact but has tons of power. One thing I did here to help make sure everything was perfectly square and lined up was cut a couple spacer blocks to use on each side to ensure they have the same spacing. With the face frame assembled, I could get it attached to the carcass. I spread a bead of glue all around and then just attached it with brad nails that could be filled since it's going to be painted. Here's the finishing touches of the toe kick being added. It's just a little block with 45s cut on each side, glued and nailed on. I really love this look. Let me know down in the comments what you think of it compared to just a normal toe kick. Once the bases were done, I moved on to making all the drawers. Since 3 quarter inch plywood isn't truly 3 quarters of an inch, I like to cut the sides to length, put them in, and take an exact measurement needed for the front and back pieces. Then subtract an inch from this measurement to account for the drawer slides, which are typically an exact half inch each. With all my drawer pieces cut, I raised the table saw blade up about 3 eighths of an inch and set it to cut a quarter inch up from the bottom to cut a groove in all the pieces for the bottom of the drawer to slide in. After I made a pass on all the pieces, I bumped the fence over to take a second pass. I'm using quarter inch white melamine for the bottoms and here you can see me testing for a snug fit. With the groove cut in all the side and front pieces, I raised the blade up to cut all the way through the back pieces at this dimension. To assemble the drawers, I'm once again using pocket holes. I drilled them on the outside of the front pieces and on the back of the back pieces. This is a really quick and easy way to build drawers and I like it because the false drawer front will cover the screws on the front and the sides are perfectly clear with no visible fasteners. I then took the time to go ahead and apply iron on edge banding to the top edges before putting them together. This was probably the most time consuming step of the whole build, but I think it was worth it to cover those plywood edges. I've been using these right angle Craig clamps the entire build and they really help at keeping the pieces aligned and prevent them from slipping as you tighten down the screws. It's probably worth mentioning that no this is not a Craig sponsored video even though you'll see me using a lot of their products. I bought all these tools myself but I really do recommend them. After all the sides were connected, I slid in the bottom piece, pre-drilled, and screwed it on. The drawers are typically square, but if they're not, you can put a clamp at an angle across the box like this to pull it into square before you screw it down. The last thing to make was all the drawer and door fronts. I just cut all these down to size off camera. Here I have all the pieces flipped face down and I'm putting markers on the back. This helps make sure I always have the correct side facing up at the router table so all my joinery lines up perfect at the end. I saved my setup blocks from the first time I used these tongue and groove bits. Now all I have to do is use them to get the bit set at the right height. Then I can run all the rails through to make the tongues on each end.
With all the tongues cut, I switched over to the groove bit and used one of the tongues to get the bit lined up. Then I ran every piece through to create all the grooves for the center panel to slide in. I'm glad these shaker style cabinets are in style right now. I love the clean and simple look, and they're really easy to make a bunch of different ways. I just prefer the router table. You just put glue on the tongues, put all the pieces together, and I'm using quarter inch MDF for the center panel since MDF paints really well. It really shouldn't take a lot of clamping pressure here, just a little bit to hold them together until they dry. Since I already bought a full sheet of quarter inch MDF for the doors, I went ahead and used it for the drawers too. But there would be a gap between the panel and the drawer box, and it would suck it in when you installed the drawer pulls. To solve this, I just used some CA glue to add another piece of quarter inch MDF to fill the gap and make it flush with the frame. I love having this Starbond CA glue on hand. It dries practically instantly once it touches the accelerator spray, and there's so many uses for it. After sanding, it was time to spray some primer. I applied two coats of shellac-based bend primer with my Airlex 5500 sprayer, sanding with 220 grit between coats. Then I sprayed two coats of General Finishes Snow White Milk Paint. Spraying white on white isn't too interesting on video, so we'll go ahead and jump to installing the drawers. Drawer slides can be pretty simple just by cutting a few scrap blocks to ensure everything is lined up right on both sides. Here you can see me adding some spacer strips on the one side to make the drawer slides flush with the face frame. Notice here how that drawer slide is covering and hiding those ugly pocket holes on the bottom. With all the slides installed, I put the scrap quarter inch melamine back in to lift the drawer up off the bottom. Pull the slide out to line it up at the front of the box and put in the first screw. I continued pulling the drawer out a little at a time and adding the next screw, then pulled the drawer all the way out to put the last one in. For the top drawer, you guessed it, more scrap blocks of spacers to set the second drawer on and install just as before. Next I could drill the holes for the drawer pulls and also the door hinges. I used to just measure and mark out or use homemade jigs that weren't adjustable, so I'm glad I decided to pick up these jigs here to make it a lot easier and faster. To attach all the fronts, I worked with gravity to my advantage with the vanities laying down on their backs. I started with this top piece that covers the sink and plumbing, got it lined up where I wanted it, and screwed it on from the inside. Since my face frame is one and a half inches wide, and all the drawers have a half inch overlay all around the openings, that left me with an open space of half inch between everything. So I simply used scrap pieces of half inch MDF to space everything correctly, and then used the holes for the drawer pulls to temporarily screw them in place. With the drawer fronts attached, I clamped a straight board on even with the bottom edges to create a ledge to set the door on after I flipped the vanity upright. This left me with flawless spacing and the door perfectly even with the drawers. Now with the vanity stood up, I could permanently attach the drawer fronts from the inside and remove the screws from the front. Finished drilling all the way through the drawer box and installed the drawer pulls, and these things were finished.
All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned some tips along the way to help or inspire you to build something like this if you wanted. Like I mentioned, all the links to the products I used throughout the video are down in the description. They're the same price for you, but it does help me a little bit if you use those links, so I really appreciate it. If you have Instagram and you're not following along already, make sure you do that. I'll show these getting installed in the bathroom, as well as the rest of the day-to-day -day stuff going on over there with the build. And of course, please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate you guys watching it. Take care.